Hello guys, welcome to Ask Raghulam. So today we're going to see, um, so how do we, uh, what are the different components that goes into assembling your own uh, PC. So I have been doing this for the last uh, several years. Um, so this is one of my very first thing which I started doing a long time ago. So first thing is, um, so this is a gaming rig. So this might have a lot of things which like a regular PC may not need it. Um, so this just an um, example I just want to show you. So very first thing guys, just before you get started, just go through some more videos, not just mine, just go through some more videos as well. And then try to understand um, different components of it, how to handle them and a lot of those things. So I'll quickly run through some of the basics. So first thing is, um, so this is a box, which where it comes in, it's a ATX or ATI type of cabinet. This is called a cabinet or a case. And uh, within that cabinet, generally you place different components um, in different places. So that's the first thing. So, and next thing is when you try to assemble something. Um, so these things, you might also test it with live power sometimes to check if you're getting the display. So make sure that you put it onto a wooden board. So this is, if you see, this is a, this is a wooden board. And um, so it doesn't, um, you know, it's a bit safe. And another thing is, uh, if you're doing it on top of uh, a carpet or if you're trying to pitch your cat or something like that, just make sure that you don't do it when you're trying to assemble something because you don't want yourself to be negatively charged or something and then, you know, you attract electricity to go through to you and uh, make sure the surface that you're standing on is well earthed or um, make sure that um, it's safe to work. So next thing is whenever you try to handle components within your PC, uh, there will always be some sort of a metal piece in there and there will be plastic portion of it. And uh, try to handle it using the plastic portion of it. So that's one little thing. And then uh, whenever you try to, uh, you know, handle a motherboard or your CPU, any of those things, uh, make sure that you don't touch the portions which it is, uh, which is the circuit side of the motherboard. Let's say when you look at the boards like these ones, um, and also make sure that you don't scratch your board with your uh, with your scissors or uh, knives or uh, screwdrivers or something. Just make sure that you do it carefully. Make sure that I actually put this one inside. So now if you see like these ones um, has got little, little uh, uh, connections that goes on your motherboard, that's your motherboard circuit. So make sure that you don't touch it with your dirt hands. So if your hands are a bit dirty or a bit of grease, uh, so make sure it's not moist. Uh, just wipe it off and wow, well, you know, just make sure it's dry. So, and then don't touch any of these circuit boards, just touch it outside of those components. Okay, so very first thing, just looking at these ones. Um, so first thing is your uh, SMPS. This is switch mode power supply. So this is where uh, your entire car computer gets the power. And the power supply that you're gonna use for your entire computer comes from this one. So now the type of power supply, the brand, and uh, how much power you're gonna supply, it basically depends on uh, what all the components that you're gonna use in there. So if you're gonna use a low power on a CPU, which has got lots and lots of components, uh, generally, you know, it might not run properly or it may not even run. So just see how much power you need it. Um, and then based on that, you go for the CPU. So for my case, um, I could actually go for 650, 700, 600, any of those ones. Um, the 600 is a minimum that I can go through. So there gen general, generally you'll go for, let's say 450, 350, a lot of those uh, different uh, ratings. Um, but those ones are good for regular basic CPUs. But if you're going for a gaming rig, make sure that you go for a decent power supplied ones. And um, so this one is Crosshair, which is a, a gaming brand, which is a really solid one. Um, so I've been using this for the last several years. So all my previous rigs, they always use the Crosshair ones. Uh, they're pretty standard, especially with the SMPS. This is the most important component of it. Uh, if you go with some unbranded ones or anything that you, you do it, you are risking entire components that sit, sit, sitting up here. So make sure that you choose a standard brand up here. So that's very important. And then, um, so next thing is you're choosing your motherboard. So that is the most important thing. So now every PC that you build has got a lifetime. So it might actually range from, let's say, uh, four years, five years to even seven years and eight years. So it can actually range for a while, but remember, um, you're not gonna keep running the same PC forever. So it tends to slow down, you need to upgrade a RAM, you have got to do put a lot of these things. So my suggestion would be is just, just being an ambitious guy, always try to want to get the best thing. Um, don't try to, 
overload your rig with things which you don't need it so what happens is let's say if you're running some high-end games or uh, graphic oriented programs such as Maya, 3ds Max, AutoCAD, any of these programs uh, most cases uh, let's say if it needs 30 gig, 32 gig of RAM and if you load it with 64 gig of RAM for an example all you're doing is just spending extra money paying extra electric, electricity bill and you don't get anything out of it because the program is not going to fast run faster than what it's supposed to run so the game's not going to be more better than what it could be with the best configuration that you have. So just think about it. So what are the usage that you have? And uh, based on that, what would be the optimal gig that you can go for? Because let's say you, you can actually spend another thousand grand on top of this one, and then you can put extra RAM, CPUs, Mercury GPUs, do all that kind of stuff. Your game's gonna look exactly the same. So it's not gonna make any difference for the thousand dollars you all these extra components take some electricity as well so you're not going to anything get anything extra out of it so now in that case you could save the thousand dollars and you can spend on your next week after three years or four years and stuff so which makes sense all right so next thing is um, whenever you get your um, uh, gaming uh, PC assembled so the very first thing is choosing your motherboard and your graphic card so the first key things that you need to look into is um, so what sort of RAM it supports um, so some motherboards you might find it cheaper uh, but they may not actually support um, the CPU chipset uh, the CPU CPU pin set um, that the latest one has the latest generation has um, and another one is the RAM so there is DDR3 ones DDR4 ones uh, so you go for the latest RAM that's very important and um, then uh, it supports the latest pin set uh, for the latest uh, CPU. So, so if you look at the whole rig, the main thing that you generally spend is your motherboard. That's you have to spend a decent amount of money. And then, um, and then the CPU. So that's the two things that's first thing you need to spend. And the next comes your RAM and the GPU. Uh, because you may actually spend a lot of money on a GPU uh, but if you get a motherboard which doesn't support DDR3, sorry DDR4, if you go for an older version of DDR, then you know, it just doesn't matter how good this one is, your RAM is not going to help you uh, supporting some large games. So yeah, so these are the primary things that you're going to look for. Um, so now, choosing a motherboard, there are a lot of manufacturers out there. So ASUS, MSI, uh, Intel, a lot of these ma manufacturers out there. So my suggestion is go for um, because each manufacturer, if you look at these components that goes on each of those uh, motherboards, uh, they are all similar. So from one motherboard to another motherboard is similar, just the way they assemble it, the firmware, the BIOS that goes in there. So that's all the things that, that makes a change. So what you do is, uh, let's say if you're going to assemble something today, you, you put down a budget for your motherboard and based on that, you see what are the manufacturers who's offering uh, motherboards within that range and then see who is offering the best and check the reviews and uh, check what other geeks have said it and based on that come to a conclusion of which motherboard you're going to choose um, so once you pick your motherboard then comes your natural choice will be a cpu most cases your motherboard will say it supports a certain a certain generation of cpu um, so based on that go for a cpu and then uh, your rams as well so rams uh, the main thing that you need to look for is two things one is your um, uh, your ram size so what size of ram that you're going to choose so this is something i'm going to do it later so i'm going to upgrade my um, ram on this uh, gaming rig so what sort of ram the size and then the fsb so that's the three components that you're going to look for so the size of ram is basically is it an 8 gig or 16 gig or what sort of ram it is and then the fsb is basically how fast the data transfer uh, happens in the ram chip so that's a 300 uh, mahertz that's a frequency of how fast it does it so this is the important figure so this is just a storage of how much the chunk of files chunk of data that it can store on the memory and this is basically how fast the data can actually go between your cpus rams and the hard drives and things like that ram is basically the in-between component between them all right so so gpu this one has got three fans i've got additional two fans up here one on the top one on the back um so it's heavily uh aerated i would say cooled cooled um rig so the reason being is i use it for a lot of 3d uh, design works cad works and gis and uh, uh, do a lot of those heavy lifting works so in that case uh, if, even with this one even with some of my uh, video editing programs some of the gis applications sometimes uh, my pc just 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 stops um, because it just 
totally uh, takes up the full RAM that it has. So right now it has got a 16 gig RAM. So that's the reason I'm gonna upgrade to a 32 gig. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get this through. So the main components that you're looking at here, this is your CPU, this is where your Intel chipset goes in. And this is your motherboard where you see in the back. And this is your GPU, this is your graphic card. And this is the coolant for the graphic card, which you can see it up here, where it's connected with two tubes to the CPU. And then uh, this is your um, power supply, SMPS. And then this is your RAM. So these are the two, two RAM sticks that I have. And um, so then you can see all the cables, SATA cables that's connected to the hard drive. The so hard drives are all uh, behind the other side of it. Um, all right, so that's it. For now guys, um, just an introduction of uh, Gaming Rig. Thank you.